All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about something that is similar to a few other videos I've done, but this is going to be four knives better than the famous, the ubiquitous K-Bar fixed blade fighting utility knife. This guy is crazy, it has a long track record. And to be honest, unlike many people on the YouTubes, I don't actually really hate this knife. I've tested mine pretty hard and at least in my conditions, it's never really shown any you know like serious signs of breakage or failure. Obviously there is some coating wear um, through the years of use, but you know, honestly, like really there isn't, outside of the like cheaper coating on this guy, there's really not like much um, as far as like damage goes to this knife. And so as, as far as it goes for me, I've never really had an issue with the K-Bar, but it definitely is a design that could be improved upon. And so today we're gonna be, like I said, talking about four knives that are better than the K-Bar fighting utility knife. And for this uh, video, I wanted to do two knives that are under the price of a K-Bar and two knives that are over, or at least two knives that are under it or very close i should say um and then two knives that are over in addition to this two we're gonna be talking about two knives that are more wilderness focused and then two knives that are more tactically focused so i wanted to give you guys at least a good range of use cases because i always get uh, comments when i do these typical comparisons so that you know like say i pull out this okc wrap seven and they're like well that's you know a, a survival knife or that's a field knife and technically in my opinion and from what i can see a lot of the marketing is very same this is a field knife Knife right here and this is a field knife here as well and once again this is a fighting utility knife this is a utility knife not as much of a fighting knife but honestly like a lot of these words are very homogenous and kind of go together even if you personally feel a way that's just the way marketing is right so I wanted to try to give you guys as wide of a span within four knives as I could but of course bear in mind that this isn't exactly perfect so the first one up on the list is going to be once again fighting oriented and this one is going to be my slightly modified Glock 81, but I, in my opinion, would choose the 78. The 78 is essentially the same knife as this. It just negates this really annoying um, root saw back here, which I'm not going to get an entirely new Glock knife just because I don't like the root saw, but this one's the 81. You want the 78 if you're going for the um, non-root saw version of this knife, but either way, this one, once again, is a fighting knife, as you can tell. Very similar in kind of overall design ethos to the K-Bar. you guys... So you guys can see there, very similar in design ethos. Now, the one thing that I do actually ironically like, well, I guess there's a couple things I like about the Glock knife over the K-Bar, and I think the Glock knife gets it right in a couple ways. So first off, the big thing is I like the steel selection. This is 5160 spring steel. It is around the same thickness as the K-Bar at 3 16ths of an inch thick, but the spring steel definitely allows you a greater shock resistance. So there is that. And then they do a kind of bent or forward angled um, upper guard here and this is actually meant to slot in or help bypass the barrel of the Steyr AUG because this is originally designed as a bayonet above all but what this does conversely for the end user you and me is that it's a bent forward or upper guard so it makes it much easier for you to put your thumb on the spine now granted this has the root saw on the back so I wouldn't really recommend putting your thumb there in the first place but once again if we're talking about the 78 where it just has the normal spine I would say that this is a really good addition because once once again, this bent um, upper guard is, it works very well for you to easily bypass that upper guard. Whereas on the K bar, you really like you can physically bypass it, but even still, I feel that with my thumb there. So it is not very easy or it's very noticeable when you do. So so like the bent upper guard on the Glock 81 slash 78. Now, once again, going back to more of a survival knife, once again, still cheaper than the K-Bar fighting utility knife is going to be the OKC or Ontario Rat Company Rat 7. Now, this is slightly subject to change because um, OKC or Ontario Knife Company has cha changed or traded hands a few times. So we will see what happens to the Rat 7. I do hope that they continue to make this knife, but um, the, this this company was recently acquired by Rowan, which is a subsidiary of Essie. So we will see what happens to the Rat 7 knife as a whole. But in the time being, this is still on the list. This is the, like I said, Rat 7. And I wanted to choose the Rat 7 over something like an SE6 because of that seven inch blade. You guys can see they're edge to edge. These are very similar in blade length. Um, and so the, I wanted to choose the Rat 7 because of the blade length as opposed to the SE6 that has an 
inch shorter blade. So the RAT7 is made out of 1075 high carbon, which is a slight downgrade in my opinion to the 1095 Crovan, but it is still a decent steel. You are getting good micarta handles. And once again, this is just a better designed knife uh, for field use. So in my opinion, I don't think I would have an issue with this in a tactical situation, the RAT7, but it is not as tactical or fighting oriented. It is more of a field knife. All right, now we're just gonna step up into the knives that are more expensive than the K-Bar. Now keep in mind the K-Bar is only about $100, $120. So this is not a terribly expensive knife to begin with. So it doesn't take a lot for you to get a more expensive knife. However, these two knives that we're gonna talk about have a baseline price of around $200 to $250. Now I say baseline because the two models that you see here are a little bit more expensive than that baseline price, but we are talking about knives that are a little bit more modified or have a little bit better um, options, I should say. So the first one up is going to be Architect Knives with the AK 6.5. Now the Architect Knives, the closest thing they make in blade length is the 6.5. They don't have a seven inch variant. They do have an eight inch, but I wanted to stick once again, as close as I could to actual blade length. And so you guys can see here with actual blade length, you're dealing with about a half inch less, but actual physical like batoning blade length, the AK 6.5 beats the K-Bar just a little bit. So this guy is very common comparable in blade length as a whole. So that's why I chose this guy for this. Um, now this one, like I said, is a little bit more premium. This is about a $250 knife because this is the CPM three variant. You can get this in 1095, which would bring this a lot closer to the price of the K-Bar. This would still be more expensive at about $170. But if you're looking at about $250 to $178 for the Architect Knives AK 6.5, this is going to be, in my opinion, a vastly superior um, field knife as far as it goes. Like it, as, as a whole, it's gonna be a very good field knife. And the nice thing about this is that AK Knives largely copied the handle of the SE6 slash the SE7. So you got, or sorry, not SE, but RAT7. So you guys can see there, there's a lot of similarities. Now, granted, this is a nicer handle so it has better chanfering and rounding than a standard OKC RAT7. But you guys can see there, there's a lot of similarity in handle, overall shape and texturing. So it is a very similar handle, but that is a good thing because it's a very comfortable handle that you can hold for hours. And once again, the AK uh, 6.5 has a far more rounded and contoured handle. So it's gonna be much better than a RAT7, but similar in shape. So that is the first one, like that's more of a field knife. Now the more fighting styled knife, and some might argue this is still more of a field knife, but this is technically a tactical knife. This is designed for tactical stuff, whatever you want to quantify that is. But this is the Bark River Knives um, Strike Force two, sorry. Uh, yeah, this is a straight force two, and this one is also in CPM 3B. Now, once again, this is a, an exception. I have to say this is a more expensive version of the strike force because it does use a more premium steel. And it also uses these very gorgeous, as you guys can see here. Um, I think it's like Thuya or Thulia handled, burl handled wood um, grips. And then of course you got those beautiful mosaic um, pins there. So obviously this is going to be a more expensive, more fancy version of the Strike Force 2. But the Strike Force 2 um, I chose because once again, we're dealing with similar blade lengths. The Strike Force 2 is just a little bit, just a scotch smaller, but it's very similar in, sorry, you guys can't really see that, a little too close to the camera, but you guys can see there a little bit um, shorter on that one, but this is more of a fighting styled knife. You have a little bit of that reminiscent kukri curve or recurve towards the back of the edge there. And and then you have definitely a very, you know, um, choppy styled knife. And then once again, to kind of finish that tactical-esque style, you have a long running swedge on the back. I'm not saying that you'd necessarily want to use this in a reverse grip um, or for stabbing, but once again, if you're labeling this as a fighting knife, this would also be a decent fighting knife too. Um, once again, very similar blade length, and this is definitely a more stabby knife. You got your nice little, um, kind of running fuller, if you will here. It's uh, kind of complex. I don't know if I'd quite call this a fuller or not, but technically it is fuller inspired. So you have a little bit of a fuller there, similar to the fuller on the K-Bar. So once again, you're dealing with a definitely more tactical knife here. And I think that that uh, rounds it out for more expensive, more um, 
tactical style knife. Then like I said, you got your AK 6.5 for your more expensive field knife. You got your Ontario Rat 7 for your less expensive field knife. Then you got your uh, Glock 7881 for your less expensive fighting or tactical knife. So in my opinion, these are some really strong contenders. Are there others out there? Yes, there's tons of other knives out there. The Tarava Yakari Puko is another valiant budget field styled um, tactical knife or fighting knife that would be worthwhile adding to this list. But once again, I don't wanna make a video that's like 40 minutes long detailing every single competitor to the K bar. I just thought that these were some really strong competitors that you either know of or don't know of, and maybe you have or haven't considered these as options. So if you're looking for something that's similar in size to the K bar, these are all similar in size to the K bar um, and similar in a lot of the kind of design ethos, except for, you know, you've got some knives that are a little bit more field worthy. So anyways, guys, all rambling aside, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.